just gonna take a sip of my green tea. <laughs> Make sure you get this in there so everyone knows I'm healthy. Um, right, everyone. Um, side hustles with Max once again. Here's um Ricardo, one of my best mates. Um, I guess now we're just going to talk a bit more about our journey as the average Joe entrepreneur or the average Joe trying to make money any way we can. Um, Ricardo, welcome as always. Yeah, cheers for having me. Good to be back. Yeah, 100%. Our second one, we'll see how it goes. Um, maybe we'll stop after this one or maybe we'll keep going. Maybe we'll be rich after this one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll, 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 I was thinking about this question a week actually and it's I think a good one to talk to about two guys to average joes in our late 20s early 30s of um like why do we want to be rich like why do you want to be rich and i thought about this whole week but why do you want to be rich for me it's not so much the material side of things it's more the lifestyle the the freedom of of not having to be bound to a job to a, a desk um and and having that time with my family and having that freedom to to get up and and go for a holiday whenever you want or go and enjoy i don't know half a day doing whatever you wish to do not so much having to answer to somebody having to clock in your nine to five tick done my job get my pay so that for me it's not the material thing it's the freedom the financial that's kinda, freedom that's what they call the financial it. freedom and yeah and just being free that's i think to be honest every every single person would probably agree with that on this planet right everyone just wants that financial freedom for me it's i want that if you money like i want that money where i'm not saying i want to buy a lamborghini or a porsche or a massive mansion but i want to have the flexibility and freedom to do that if i want to do you know what i mean that's like that's that's my ambition and not having to live well not not having to live check by check type type lifestyle 100 percent, and actually that segues into the next question but i'll get there 100 percent. it's like we all get paid a career right like a nine to five whatever we're doing whatever whether it's your career or it's just a job between jobs but you only that's only enough money to get by right and especially when you get a mortgage you've got bills it's funny how when you think about your disposable income after all of that it's literally barely anything even in even for middle class like middle class is the new poor <laughs> like yeah now it's crazy right yeah no exactly right and just just having that like once as soon as you get a mortgage you end up getting a car you end up getting this and that and your yeah, your credit score just goes out the freaking window and you start suddenly all this money you, your income is just suddenly gone as soon as it comes in it, it goes out quicker than it comes in and then you're left with a couple of hundred dollars in your bank to save every month and you're like okay this is not gonna get me anywhere <laughs> exactly chump change it's like uh, i spoke to a good friend a couple of weeks ago and he said when he first bought his house in new zealand uh, his very first mortgage and this was like 10 years ago and he was quite young with his partner but he said that after all of his bills and his mortgage was paid he was he had like 20 to 40 dollars at the end of everything as disposable income i'm like can you imagine that now 20 to 40 dollars of disposable income after all of that yeah like i i've always tried to make it that so that my income can cover all the bills um, and at, that, at this point in time in my life, yes, I can do that, but we we'll literally would have no savings. So obviously my wife would, is forced, not forced, but she, she has to work for us to have any savings or extra money, pocket money, whatever. Um, yeah, like I just want that extra income so that, hey, if she doesn't want to work for a year, she doesn't have to. Um, I still would have to, but hey, at least gives us that freedom again to, to do what we want and not necessarily be tied to uh, our Monday to Friday job yeah exactly right the other part of it and this kind of annoys me as well is that when people say like money can't buy you happiness but money can buy you things that make you happy have you ever you, seen an angry man driving a ferrari no exactly right and have <laughs> you know like do you ever hear rich people complaining about all the money they have yes rich people have problems i find that sometimes time here. yeah what's that i find that sometimes uh, if you go the other way where you're breaking you, you're selling too much of your time for for extra money you know like rich people have that problem where their family falls down so something you need to find a balance as well yeah, uh, yeah. it's uh, that's where the tricky part comes yeah 100 percent. no no i agree and this segues into the next point of so another point i thought about this week was making money is actually really easy so mm -hmm. making money the idea of making money is really easy making a lot of money is what's hard do you know what i mean so what i mean by that is is that for those who don't understand it's like everyone can get a job and make money 
you can go work at Domino's the next like tomorrow and make start making money like start making cash or you can sell things online and make money like for example I made thirty dollars on Redbubble last month thirty USD right so that was easy enough to do just organically but it's that the hardest thing is how do how do you make a lot of money like how do you make heaps of money yeah and and I guess that's where you start sort of dabbling into different revenues and different ways until you you, you hit something that that sticks something that provides that extra into your income um for me at the moment i'm hoping that at some point i'll be able to make a business not a business but like a little like you say like a side hustle that hopefully this would actually um give me that extra cash because yeah i haven't tried many things other than what i'm doing like video editing filming but at some point like um, one of my family members wants to try and do some type some form of drop shipping so i'm helping them without knowing what i'm doing <laughs> but hopefully it's kind of me dabbling into it in a way so yeah i think you just got to try things and, and see where you land and you, you won't know until you try it and that's the problem is everyone's too scared to try something and said oh i won't make any money but how do you know how do you know that that's it might land something big I and mean, you might land a good customer you might you might end up quitting your job that you might get the hot doing. product 100%. you might have that hot product that nobody you might think of one day hey no, nobody's got one of those I can get them from China or whatever and start selling them by word of mouth, making my like own the, Instagram like the page. Like spinner. Made that guy a million, yeah? Do you know what I mean? But it's, it's funny. I actually talk about dropshipping on my podcast and uh, it's it was actually literally the first thing I learned online. It was the first business model I learned online and I remember doing it from scratch. I built a website on Shopify. I started importing the products and it was funny. Funny enough, it was like my biggest lessons learned in the online business realm and like drop shipping. And to be honest, I didn't probably give it that much enough attention or enough patience. And then I also kind of didn't think about a niche and it was like, it was a huge learning curve for me, but it was the first thing I did. But I think drop shipping is still an amazing drop business model because it's technically, if you think about it and no one will, no one actually thinks about this. It's what everyone's already doing. It's what organizations are already doing like big names. Like there's like there's jewelry businesses out there that you'll know huge brands you won't even think about it like Swarovski I think they drop ship so all of their orders are made to order and then they get it manufactured overseas once orders are placed that's when they ship it out to the customers it's essentially the same thing right so people think of drop shipping as this like I don't know like online business model that was created in the last two years it's been literally organizations have been doing it for years yeah that's it's just more mainstream now what's 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 the biggest challenge for you currently with your, I guess, like this journey for you? What's the biggest challenge you face? It's the learning curve um, the, and the experience trying to, trying to get um, out there, trying to, obviously, I, I can't, well, I can is, um, put myself out there, um, but I don't have quite that experience. Like I've literally, what you see right now is, I don't know, when did we start talking about this? Maybe four months ago, five months ago? Uh, that's when I bought the first camera, I started learning uh, video editing um, and all the tricks of, of this um, industry. And it's it's a learning curve trying to get out there and how do I land my first customer? How do I have the confidence to, to reel in the first customer and charge them money for it and knowing that, uh, hey, I'm good enough to charge you that money? Um, it, it's, yeah, it's a, the, the initial step. I think once I get one under my belt, I think it's kind of where it'll hopefully take off and I'll have that confidence to say, hey, I'm worth this much and these are the jobs and this is this is my portfolio. I think that's my biggest struggle is actually trying to make money, make my first dollar. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. There's, it, it, it's funny, like you'll, you'll learn, in general, you'll, you'll, you'll learn so much. Like it's crazy. I think like my biggest challenge right now is probably understanding what to prioritize and to scale like i'm putting heaps of focus on i guess youtube podcasting um currently right now for the next like month but it's funny because six months ago i was putting heaps of focus on print on demand so my print on demand stores so like Redbubble, amazon etsy and i've kind of left those alone for a bit like i still work on them maybe like once or twice a week but but now i'm seeing heaps of um traction with like Redbubble and amazon which is crazy so it's just like organically that's happening so i think that will happen for you 
and myself naturally for, you know, you put your hard yards in now and then it'll come into fruition over time. T- it's like an organic process. I yeah, well, I, I think you, you did on, um, as long as you put effort into it and you, you, you put in content out there, you, you're, doing, you're doing your work, you, you're, you, as cliche as it sounds, hard work pays off. Um, and, and people will value that at some point. Like sometimes I get a, a good comment on somebody, hey, that was a cool video you posted the other day. Was like, uh, that could lead into another conversation. Hey, this person needs a video. And I yeah, said you could do it for them. It's just little things that could help me without me knowing. It's just organically will happen. And that I know that I need to put myself out there. And obviously I need to search it myself. It's not just going to happen. But yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm hoping that this, what I'm doing, the hard yards that I'm doing in the background, hopefully will pay off eventually. 100%. And also staying consistent and persistent, right? Like two very important traits in this direction, I think, especially as, um, I mean, I, I don't want to say entrepreneur because I think that's real, like real corny, but it's just more of like if you're wanting more in life, you have to be driven. You have to be persistent. Like you just have to keep going. Like you like have to be a pest, right? You just have to yeah. keep going, keep going, keep going. No, but do you know what I mean? It's like you have to keep yeah, yeah. going, keep going, and like never ever give up. And it could take five years, it could take ten years, but you'll get there eventually, surely, right? Like how is it? Why does it work for others and not you, right? That's the way I think about it. I'm like, I just have to outwork that guy or outwork that person. Do you know what I mean? Or like, I just have to post more regularly than them or like just keep doing videos and keep tweaking little things and keep posting designs on my stores. And if it's like drop shipping, it's like, okay, keep doing niche research. And if one store doesn't work, try another one. Do you know what I mean? Like you just have to keep going until something works. Yeah. And I guess you also need to make, it makes you, it makes you a little bit accountable when you start doing like, say, if you commit yourself to doing one video a week that keeps you accountable, then you can actually do a study on that and see, okay, th- this actually worked, this didn't, this when this was a hit, this wasn't, um, let's concentrate on that. And I think that's also something that I need to, once I get my channel uh, going, is actually analyzing is what actually would sell in, in a way in the video form and, and how, to, how to present it and how to provide it to, to customers. 100%. And the other thing, quickly do that, I like how you see, you know, at post one video a week. Also, goal setting is so important. Like goal setting, be realistic with your goal setting. So, for example, you would have one, you could say one video a week, and that's realistic, especially if you've got a nine to five, you've got kids, you've got like outside like work hobbies and other um, priorities and responsibilities. It's like have realistic goals. That was one of my biggest lessons learned was I was trying to do too much in a week. And I was like, oh, I'll post a video every day. Not never going to happen never going to happen like post like set yourself realistic goals and you're more likely to stick to them yeah like i've, I've seen like some of the um, photographers that are follow like they they did one photo every day and <laughs> for 365 like they said yeah it could be just easy just grab your camera and take a photo but they actually put effort in, into it but they, they just held them accountable that they'll be 11 at night like oh crap i need to go and take a photo so they would get up and actually take a photo and and the way that held them accountable is because they were posting on Instagram or, or in some social media that, hey, you didn't miss a single day. There's 365 photos there. And obviously we're talking about like the Peter McKinnons, like the the big guys that, that set these goals and if they can do it and I'm assuming they're super busy, why not us? Like, why can't we do it? Yeah, it's exactly realistic. Right. It's realistic, but it's hard. It's not easy. No, exactly right. What about what isn't working what hasn't worked for you what's been a failure so far well no i won't say a failure like a, a learning a curve. Is always a lesson because i haven't done jobs as such i haven't uh, because i haven't had to meet let's say meet a brief um i haven't had many failures if you want to call them that um in the sense that i haven't let anybody down um i've learned obviously like i said this learning curve of of learning the 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 craft of doing this is it's on me and nobody's putting pressure on me so again the only person i'm letting down is myself if i'm not putting enough effort into it um the only thing let down is maybe not yeah not not, not making money at the moment i was hoping to make something by now um and have a a client or have something that they will somewhat show some fruits um of of what i'm doing um, but other than that, I think is yeah, for me, it's early stages. So I haven't had a big kick in the guts or something that's really put me down as such. Yeah, you will 
your journey is a little bit different to mine because i guess mm. my focus is like real online you know it's all it's all like all the online realm like on everything online everything digital so online businesses podcasts all that jazz but you, you know i think in every person on a similar journey to you and i would have you definitely have your um setbacks i'll call it that but then like they're very important lessons so for example my first drop shipping store was an absolute setback like huge lesson huge uh, I think something I had to overcome and, and be like, okay, forget about it, move on to the next thing and just keep work harder and just do more research next time. Um, but you definitely do have your setbacks. But I guess the important with that, the important thing with that is that you have to make sure those setbacks turn into opportunities, right? Opportunity for learning. So for example, imagine, and this is kind of, we need this as well in the world, right? So for example, like, Imagine someone who tries to do a dropshipping store and it doesn't work and then they just give up and they forget about it and then they're just like, oh, well, it wasn't for me. Do you know what I mean? So it, yeah. it's it's the same thing when people, I guess, try a new hobby or do anything in life and they try it and they just give up, right? That's like the worst mentality I think you can have. Yeah, and, and I guess like I've invested my own savings into this so I'm not treating it as something lightly. Like I'm... I, I, I've put my name out there and in, in, in a way that I've I created a Instagram page that I added most of my friends to. So it's, you know, like it's not something that I'm, I'm just going to do here and, and not show anybody. And hopefully someday it might work. Who knows? And I just threw it out there and Hey, I'm, I'm doing it. And whether you like it or not, it's yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the other thing as well, man, you got to be ready for the scrutiny, but it's, it's a beautiful thing because it makes you realize what all those successful uh i don't know like entrepreneurs like successful businessmen or like people out there doing well right they, they've done, like they've gone on their own journey they've done their own thing and they've they've found success and they're kind of on that journey to wealth and prosperity and then you kind of realize oh man the scrutiny is there and it's just uh, once again really really corny but the haters right you will have people that will scrutinize they don't understand they don't support because they don't get it they've never done it themselves they'll never try it themselves they've never tried anything but you just have to take it on the chin well it's easy to hide behind the keyboard and, and yeah just type away and think, all right I'll, I'll give you a camera and you try it let's see what happens uh, exactly <laughs> right yeah exactly right now let's put you in front let's put you in front of that camera and see how you how you go <laughs> yeah exactly right and i think like everyone talks about it right you you'll hear that all those even mr beast the biggest youtuber in the world i yeah. think he even talks about it he's like his first videos were absolute trash and he just talks about that kind of stuff of you know if he stopped from the er, like early comments he was getting then he would never be where he is today and he's like literally a multi-millionaire from youtube do you know what i mean so it's i don't know it's um his his, his journey is like nuts oh yeah like crazy I think, but there's heaps of YouTubers like him. You know what I mean? There's that Gary Vichick. There's a Gary, yeah, Gary Vichick, I think. Yeah, as well. Uh, literally from YouTube. And now he's, I think now he doesn't even post videos on YouTube anymore, very rarely. And now he's just like owns all these separate businesses, but that all stem from YouTube. Yeah. It's that opportunity that, that, that change. Yeah. Yeah. YouTube's an incredible platform. Um, Actually. So speaking of mentality, mindset. I think this is a topic that people talk about and then you, know, you see all those like Instagram social media posts about hey if they have like you know like that mamba mentality which is Kobe Bryant's mentality or just like a really strong mindset and I think yeah 100% like what do you think what kind of mindset do you think you need for you for yourself right if you want to if you want to be successful in your future build wealth and prosperity what mindset do you need that that is one aspect that i actually need to do um a hard research on in terms of mindset and and what what is required in terms of for business side of things um obviously i've never ran my own business um in terms of how to seek things but for me as the go get attitude i think it's it's just never give up keep going until the wheels fall off because you got to do it and and nobody's going to do it for you so for me is yeah definitely that trying to get that mindset that it's not going to happen on its own you need to get out there and and do the work and and it will happen it will happen 100 percent agree uh, for me what i'm doing i think um i think you're spot on like what you said can relate to like literally anyone right anyone who's doing anything from scratch or who wants to learn a new skill or who wants to try something new or they want to start their own business um, for myself what i'm doing it's just 
being incredibly persistent and consistent and just keep going like keep trying and learning new skills keep scaling keep like leveling it up right so going from you know i've just bought this little shotgun mic um it's literally the first vlogging thing um that i bought apart from the selfie ring do you know what i mean it's just little things like that because i'm like oh i want slightly better audio now yeah video is a, it's a it's 50 percent of the of the video but audio is such an important point if people can't hear you what's what's the point if nobody's going to click on your videos because this guy's audio is trash yeah exactly right. and part of the reason why w when i was going to do a another podcast with a with a friend um the first thing i thought was audio uh got a got to invest into audio and in hindsight i ended up using it myself for my own purposes not necessarily for for the other podcast that i was thinking of helping a friend yeah. out with um and then lighting like there's so many aspects that's yeah video you, you can video with anything it doesn't matter as long as you can hear the person then it'll be some good lighting and then get get a camera get any camera you have and just start start shooting i i always tell people on my channel i'm like you know if anyone watches my shorts on my youtube channel i always say just get your phone and start filming like stop wasting time what you, can, you, you can get a setup for a hundred dollars not counting your phone yeah 100 like for you i get it like you're you're doing videography a lot, a lot different um but if you just want to start vlogging in a youtube channel i'm just like you just go get an iphone cameras amazing quality mm. like you get go get your phone and start filming start posting shorts start just like you have to start today or you have to take action otherwise you never will if you make the excuse of oh i want to get the right setup i want to get backdrop i need to like get my studio going and i'm just like oh man you're already behind you are already behind you're already wasting time you're like your weeks behind everyone already months years you know what i mean like you have to like you're gonna have to get at least 10 to 20 30 40 if not 50 videos up before you get traction on youtube you know what i mean like you need to start today so that by the end of the year you'll have something on youtube 100 percent. yeah so the i think the mindset thing is really 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 critical uh, i think it's important like if you have a mindset of like oh i'll just give it a go and see how it goes that's fine that's fine that's great but i don't think that's gonna be good for longevity with the, with the, you know just the attitude in general you definitely definitely need to um dive in yeah head first and, and just go with the punches and yeah keep going pe keep it severe like you said it's like i always say the same things over and over again and it's things like you just have to be consistent you have to be driven you have to make sure you post videos you have to start your online business today go start go get a, like a loan from a bank go start drop shipping go buy some products like go start a photography business like whatever your side hustle is start it today right like you're already behind it's it's almost 2023 depending on how old you were like i'm 33 i wish i started this 10 years ago and that's my biggest regret is not like not knowing about this years ago i actually do a video where i talk about what schools don't teach you and it's super quick it's actually like a trash video i just like literally have like the phone in front of me and i just say i talk about what like schools never taught you and it's so true it's like if i could do it all over again i would beg schools to teach me how to make money how to start a business yeah how to manage money how to get money even my bcom didn't tell me how to teach start a business it just teaches you the elements of business like marketing and ethics and or like branding but but it doesn't actually teach you like how to start a business from scratch right like or how to make money or how to be an entrepreneur yeah i don't know it's... yeah it's just i guess it's the guidelines that they're, they don't believe in so it's probably not in the in the scope of things for for schools and yeah i 100 percent agree like if i'd known about investing about i guess crypto wasn't a thing back then but stock market definitely was um for me like i went through i did an engineering mechanical engineering degree the thing that i used the most it was one course that i did on excel and and, and i'm not heavily into an engineering job but i do a fair amount of engineering and ex ex having to drive excel is one of the most helpful things i've ever used and i did it for one semester out of four years exactly right man exactly and and it's funny you mentioned investing before oh don't get me started if i knew about peripheral investing 10 years ago not not like the standard government schemes like kiwi saver and then, you know in the us you got your 401k you know the retirement schemes i'm talking about peripheral investing like trading stocks making money understanding how bonds work how dividends work if i knew that once again 10 years ago holy moly we wouldn't even be having this conversation i'd be on my yacht and Croatia. or even or even learning about real estate like you know like investing into housing market and 
none of that zero if all i ever knew was from my parents and family friends that bought houses oh that's cool one day maybe i'll do it that's all i knew exactly right like getting in early and starting to flip houses 100 percent, 100 percent. um yeah could not agree more and the other thing as well is yeah like my nine to five i'm just glad that my master's has transitioned into what i studied and also what i've done for the last eight years which is great for a nine to five but imagine if you have just been going from job to job to job to job and they've all been like different jobs different industries different fields and you reflect back on your high school and university and you're like man what a waste of time i should have been learning about how to invest how to like get into real estate early how to flip houses how to build a business you, you, do, do you know what i mean it's crazy hopefully there's this whole youtube thing it reaches a lot of other kids because kids watch consume probably the most consume the most amount of youtube out of anybody hopefully they they learn out of this online type of learning <laughs> yeah. well i've learned it all online well that's it i mean everything yeah. i've learned about videography photography is where it's coming from youtube i haven't yeah. gone to school i haven't learned nobody no i mean i've got one friend that actually showed me a few things with a camera and that's about it that's what i'm gonna that's what I'm literally going to tell my daughter when she grows up. I'm going to like while she's going to school, and that's great. She'll go to school. She get all her education as like we did. But on the side, I'll also be like, start looking at this, start reading about this, start learning about this, because this is what will actually help you. It's just learning things that you're not learning in school on the day to day. Is it's I think it's key. It's it's take it as a hobby, make it fun, and then naturally they'll they'll start going towards that stuff. Yeah, exactly right. All right, so running out of time we'll keep this one short and sweet um otherwise any closing remarks in terms of mindset is yeah just just learn apply yourself and and just keep keep hustling keep, keep hustling and just just keep trying and don't give up and give give it a world um that's exactly what i'm doing i've never tried anything like this um and uh, one day i just thought hey enough of this sort of pulling back and said oh nobody people will laugh at me people will We'll try and diminish what I'm doing. Who cares? I just threw that out and I just, I had some money lying around, invested in myself and hey, I'll be the one laughing if this pays off. Exactly right. And the biggest thing you said where I think a lot of people resonate, resonate with is invest in yourself. Who cares about anyone else? They don't matter at all mm. because they're not on your, they're not on your journey, A, and B, they're not doing what you're doing and C, what they do doesn't impact you and what you do doesn't impact them. It doesn't reflect them, right? So... 100%. And hey, the channel's called Side Hustles with Max for a reason. I love hustling. I love money. And the fact that we can just talk about it and hopefully people resonate with, with it. Hopefully people are on similar journeys. Otherwise, yeah. Um, Rick, as always, thanks for coming. Uh, the next one, I'll definitely, hopefully we can do the next one the next week or two, which will be good. And thanks for having me. Thanks, thanks for coming. Stay tuned for the next one. Yeah, peace.